Oh, hello everybody. There you are. Glad you've popped in. Right. Um, back to work next week. Hmm. Proper legs. Still a bit swollen, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so, thought just to break it back in again, I'd, um, well, to coin a phrase, um, do some ordinary stuff like um, walking about and um, uh, repairs. There's a couple of things I wanted to have a look at and this is one of them. Viscous fans. Well just found out how they work. Right, the bimetallic spring it heats up with the warm air coming through the radiator and turns that little valve in the middle and that uh, adds the resistance to the fan cool eh? so I've uh, given it a wire brush and I've put some WD on it and we'll see if it works I suppose one way of testing them if you're not sure is spin the blade when it's cold when the engine's cold then when the engine's warmed up and it's hot spin the blade again and if it's still the same then it's obviously not working it should be stiffer theoretically anyway um, to look at a proper video on that go to Britannic Restorations um, it's a chap called Mike he's from Yorkshire but he's in Canada and he normally does 110s and 90s and all sorts of stuff but he's very very good and it was him that put me onto this so there you go that's how your viscous fan works because I never knew that it's all about that metallic spring winding up, turning the valve, job's done. Awesome. Right, so I'm going to pop that back on. Right, it's MOT time tomorrow. So, um, yes, yes, I need to change that. That's a brake fluid. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be black, it should be um, kind of nice and clear. So be careful when you take the top off. That's how it stands, it's going to be a twist and pop up. Mine were a bit stiff and it flew out and the fluid went all over the place, so watch out for that. Right, this is how I'm going to change the brake fluid. So that's to start with. Um, just have some disappointing news. <coughs> just had a look in the intercooler pipe up to the Good old, yes I've got an EGR fitted for the MOT man, thank you. And it was full of oil. That's bad. Could be that there's still some leftover oil from when the old turbo was on. I hope so, but it's not really run that much perhaps to blow it through. I'm hoping that's what it is. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. <sighs> Fleet news is equally depressing. No Astra, untouched. Nothing's moved. Um, Grey Fusion, the 06 Fusion 1.4 TDCI um, turbo full of oil again. That's very depressing. So, so I thought I'll go get some more advice from somebody and it wouldn't start. <laughs> no, it wouldn't crank, nothing. Lights come on, immobilizer lights flashing. No cranking, nothing. Chuffing zilch. Spent it all day on it, zilch. So we told it to a uh, chap I know. It's there now, he's going to have a look, we'll come back to that, I'll do a separate video. So, hopefully we'll tell you what it is. Um, simply key in, twist it, try to turn to ignition, all the lights come, everything's normal, it's not the battery. Tried to crank it, nothing, zilch. Uh, but the immobiliser light's flashing. Mm. So, I think it's the transponder thing in the key, but the day before it was fine. It's, fine, it's been fine all the time in that respect. Until last, um, what day is today? Today is Wednesday, so it was last Sunday. So you ran it last Sunday, and that's when I found the oil in the turbo. Um, kind of packed it up, come, came back to it Monday, nothing. So what the hell happens in between? What's going on there? Right, anyway, I'm going to pop this fan back on. And then we'll start with bleeding the brakes. Right, that's that. Right, I'm going to get uh, the majority of this uh, fluid out. So I can put any fresh in. You can see it's pretty hacky, so what I'm going to do 
is give it a good stir up with this miniature turkey baster. Get all the particles off the bottom, give it a good, a good stir so it's all suspended. As you can see, that's not normal, is it? Now this should be changed every two years. And I've got to admit, I've had this Land Rover for four years and never done this, so it's my fault, really. Anyway, of course, you know why it has to be changed because it's hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture. So the boiling point lowers, and then that's when the brakes boil away. When one afternoon when you're going down a steep hill. It's not the best time to find out your brakes are no Right. Well, that's pretty black now. I've got a pretty good job stirring that up. Got to be careful with brake fluid because it uh, takes your paint off as well. Right then. Not actually tried this before, so we'll see how it goes. Right, that's all, all that, all that out. In the end, I had to use a syringe. It wouldn't take too long on the other way. Right, so now we can pop the new stuff in. See, we've got the wheel off, got the uh, bleed nipple, which is an 11 mil for some obscure reason. Got that slackened off. Right, just need my assistant soon. Uh, you don't have to take the wheels off to do this, uh, but as soon as I'm changing the winter tyres to summer tyres, then it's to combine the two, which will make it easier. So it's at this point that I'd like to nominate myself for the best waste of time year award for 2019 and that was winterizing my discovery a complete waste of time that was an award that to award to me yeah let's so we diagnosed the head was cracked with the diesel getting into the oil didn't use it had to use it because the spare car failed and then lost an ankle anyway that's for that's life Ah, oh, fresh, you just in time. Okay. Yeah. Alright, shove it down. Back up. Down. Back up. Down. Okay. Some crap off. Yeah, probably not. 
Right, that's the piston pushed all the way back in. The idea being, get all the old fluid out of the caliper. Oh, put it back on. Put the bolts back in. Okay. Right, shove the pedal down slowly. Is it down? Yep. Right, so lay it back up, nice and steady, then down again. Nope. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Very back up. Okay, right. Down again. Yeah. Up. Down. Up. Now try it, is it hard? Oh, no, so if it's, no, if it's, you think it's like it was, it'll, it'll do. That's okay, we've got the other three to do yet, so... Oh yeah, have we? I don't remember. Oh yeah, I had to, I had to, I had to change the caliper. Right, so... That's more or less it. I'm going to do all the same with the other three wheels. Um, basically, shove some um, flu new fluid through the system, get it into the bottle, take the caliper off, squeeze the, ju the uh, <laughs> squeeze the juice out of the uh, caliper, and put the caliper back on, fully fill it with fresh stuff. Hopefully, that's the idea. Anyway, that's the way I do it. Um, I'm going to do the same with the other three wheel, uh, other three wheels, starting up obviously the furthest back. So the next one is the next rear, and then the offside front, sorry, near side front, offside and offside front. Right, so that's great, that's what we're going to do so far. So we'll crack on with that, we'll see you in a bit. Ah, good, you're back. Uh, right, all four wheels changed, um, yeah, a bit of a fail really. Yeah, near side rear went okay, as you saw. <coughs> offside rear, I couldn't get the bleed nipple undone, so couldn't risk shearing it off or doing anything drastic for spoiling my chances tomorrow. Uh, I certainly use a caliper. There's a sticking caliper on the front offside as well. <sighs> no. Just goes to prove how, how old and, and unfit I am, that's all. That's all I've managed to achieve today and it's taken all afternoon. It's a simple bleeding job. Right, so anyway, it's some um, heads banging and I'm going to uh, toddle inside, get some tea and uh, oh. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this, I'm sorry, I'm getting too old. Right, foot aches, um, everything else aches. Uh, Take my wheels away tomorrow, so big MOT day. Right, let's hope, uh, let's hope for the best, shall we? And there's at least two faults I could do with. Um, the head, the head, won't, head won't bother the MOT, it's just it's everything else. We'll see, shall we? Anyway, I'll leave that till tomorrow. And see you in a bit.